Okay, cool. Hello, so a couple of people asked me how I do that uh, screen print type deal. So I'm making a little video where I basically show you how I do that. Um, full disclosure, I actually don't usually do a sketch. Usually what I do is I just kind of block it in with the base color. Um, but I wanted to skip the step of me doing trial and error or like struggling to pick a character or whatever. So I'm just doing my OC Cassidy. Uh, I personally don't like a pure white, but you can use, totally use a pure white uh, canvas. I just do a very desaturated, like very pale uh, yellow, and I think it just kind of does the trick and it's fine. Then uh, I will have three layers all completely separate from each other on multiply. I find this method is pretty quick uh, in terms of getting stuff. Now you can see Procreate is actually kind of annoying to like change color modes. Sometimes it just doesn't do it. It just goes straight back to normal, um, but whatever. So in my colors on Procreate, I have uh, a palette I've actually created. These are the original CMYK. And then I just kind of fucked around with them and like, you know, did some other blends. Now the thing is, uh, these are the original. I would personally recommend just trying these out first, seeing if you like them before doing like your own palettes. Uh, this is the one I personally prefer just here. I don't know. It's hard to see because you can't see my like stylus or cursor, but anyway. Uh, so starting, I'll start with yellow. So on the base layer, I'll just make it yellow. It honestly doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna block in. I'm gonna make the base sketch really pale. And also I'm gonna pick a different brush. I'm gonna go and pick my shale brush, which I've adjusted to hell and back. Um, so it's barely the shale brush anymore, but I like it uh, for this anyway. I used to use it way more. If you've been following me for like more than a year, you'll remember I used to use this brush pretty much exclusively. Uh, and then I stopped using this brush. <laughs> um, and now I mostly use like HB pencil and stuff, but basically what you're gonna do you don't have to follow this specific method. I also don't know if this is the best way to do this. I just think it kind of is fun and easy. Like I'm not doing this for like illustration sake. It's more because it's just kind of a fun method. Um, yeah, so you're just gonna, okay, laptop, what's up? So you're gonna block it in. I wouldn't worry too much about considering whether the yellow is actually gonna go there or not because uh, I'm not particularly concerned. That comes through in editing later, so. Yep. So yeah, now I have my yellow. I'm gonna go in with magenta and just test it out. So what you can also do for yourself actually, and this is what I have been doing. So on each layer, you can put like a little circle in the corner of the color. And look at that, you're making a color wheel of like what colors you're able to get. Uh, and it's pretty easy. Also, don't worry too much if you end up working with the wrong color in the layer. Um, and you're like, oh, it's too many steps to go back. Just set a clipping mask with the color that you want. Uh, the thing is, you can't color drop anymore because all of these layers are on multiply and your background layer is not white. So you're gonna have to just kind of go in. That's why I recommend doing a swatch, just because then you can pick your colors really easily. And because you're only working with whatever colors you have, uh, it's pretty easy to just uh, like you're not doing much blending. I mean, I guess you can, but I don't think that works really for the look. You don't want it to be blended because screen printing is just laying down chunks of color over each other. So like a translucent sheets of like color. So yeah, so we're doing that. I'm gonna, I just kind of work sporadically. Like again, this is such like a simple, like silly method. Uh, like you can go really elaborate and stuff. I just haven't really bothered to yet. Um, so yeah, this is basically just what I do. It's just, this is the order of operations that I kind of take. Uh, also another fun fact or whatever. So uh, I actually do go in in a minute or once I've set all of my colors and erase out the parts where I don't want yellow to be interacting. So part of the fun is the mess of having like overlays happen. And you can also achieve this by actually offsetting the colors a little bit. I'll show you what that looks like in a second, I guess. But part of the fun is just seeing what happens and shit. So let's keep going. 
So there's no real wrong way to do this. I mean, this is just the kind of method I've gone for, and there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, and I find that this always tends to look better after a couple rounds of edits anyway. And you can take your eraser, which I'm going to make sure is also on shale, and like carve out sort of lines. So at this stage, what am I going to do? I'm going to put more freckles on her. And then, do do do. Make the ear thing happen. And then kind of outline her face a little bit. And then I'm actually just going to not use the base anymore because I think it does ruin it uh, and looks bad. So then I'm going to go into my blue, which I've already made the mistake of color picking instead of just going for the original color. And her eyes are green, so I'm okay with how that looks. I'm gonna go into her eye line, and then that's gonna be kind of where my darkest colors are. You know, her eyebrows. Wherever all three colors are overlaying is gonna be the darkest just naturally. So you can choose how you go about dealing with that. So the whole point is that there should be overlap and like it should be just a bit messy and kind of have colors poking through. And we're gonna deal with how to like really emphasize that in a second. Um, and then if I originally, what I did want was there to be like a turquoise circle. So we're just going to test to see if that like looks good before I keep going. And also if you're like, but her hair, like for me, this character has brown hair. And if you're like me, then you might be like, oh, but her hair isn't brown. Like, do I even like, do I want to bother trying to emulate brown? And honestly, the answer kind of is like, depends. I don't really bother with emulating at all, so, you know, just do whatever. This is supposed to be just a fun method of, like, seeing what could be fun to do. Uh, and then the cyan, if I call this turquoise, I mean cyan, but... I don't know how this works with RGB, you might have to do an add layer instead of multiply, like, there is a way to do, uh, because they these are additive and I'm pretty sure RGB is subtractive. I don't know. I had to study color theory like 2 years ago and it is for real the most boring shit in the world. I do not like it and I don't like stu like I think it's useful to know but studying it is like really dumb like all the terms and stuff but it's useful for screen printing. Anyway, stuff. So yeah. It's kind of it. Like then you can just do like weird sh stuff like this. Why am I stopping myself from swearing? I don't know. So yeah, then that's the gist of it. So that's the gist of actually doing it. And then you can go in and then you can do like some fun stuff. Like, what am I doing? Stick to the colors. You can do like little embellishments and stuff like that and watch the overlap and have fun with it. And honestly, at this point, I just erased those little corner bits because it kind of looks, you can leave them in as a design flare if you want. I just don't really want them for this. And you can actually go in and erase out parts, and that could be fun. And I don't think I want to, though. And then you can even go in with your magenta on the magenta layer, see what that gets you. Uh, and yeah, I think it's pretty fun. I think it's a fun method. Now I want to get rid of my layer. So what I'm going to do is in the eraser, gonna go into true grit stamps i got these for free as like a texture pack but you can really use any texture stamps just test whatever you want to do so i am erasing in like little bits the whole deal so i can even lower the opacity of my eraser to like get a less intense effect so i'm actually gonna go all the way back and just do that for the whole thing so stamp out what you want gone in like this little texture thing and what this is nice for is that you can see like you can see the yellow behind the red uh, and it's a bit like and you can test out a bunch of different erasers for this I'm currently not going to because I don't really think it matters then I go in with the original color of the background and I do that with the uh, texture stamp whatever texture you want I lower the opacity on that. I do a multiply layer of like a slightly darker one and that's like dirt. 
and then I just really lower the opacity on that and it's really subtle it barely makes a difference but I like it and it's like a little flare and then I go in uh, and I get like a subtle craft paper or watercolor paper I do that I really lower the opacity again like it's really just not supposed to be that noticeable I might just fuck around with other papers like box board I think is fun yeah that's pretty nice and then, uh, this is something I like to do. I like to go into Eraser. I go into my Comics Max Pack. These are not part of the Comics Max Pack. I, these are free online, the half tones. And then I just erase half tones out of everything. Like just really like flare it out. Like don't overdo it or anything. Though this whole method is kind of like overdoing a lot of textures and stuff. Cause you're trying to emulate something that's physical and like tangible. So of course it's not going to be perfect, um, but I still think it's fun and like, look, when I do that, you can see the hair already goes pinker and it's really just a very silly like little method and I really like it. Okay, once that's all done, I have a few options. So I can individually color balance all of these, which I think I'm just going to do today, but you can also m merge all of them together and then color balance. So I'm just color balancing just as I please to do whatever. Uh, and then blue, I always like my blue to be a little greener and then I might desaturate it a little bit. Yes, I like these. Then I'm gonna merge all of it together and then this is a, how I just color correct. This doesn't really do anything for the halftone stuff. This is just, you're watching how I color correct now. Uh, so I'm just gonna make it a bit on this side. Yes, I do want it to be more saturated. Now the thing is, if you stick with the CMYK, you can be pretty sure that when you print it, it will show up exactly as promised. Exactly. Uh, CMYK is true to printer ink. There's really no getting around that. Uh, but if you do this shit, you might end up getting reds that are not really possible with, by mixing yellow and magenta. So just be warned, you get what you like ask for basically. Uh, I don't know what I want to do here. This is, you're just watching me fuck around at this point, but you know. Okay, I think that's good. I might, I could go into curves and then I also, sometimes I do this just to fuck around. I go into the gradient maps. Oh, that looks so fun. Uh, yes, I really like gradient maps. <laughs> uh, Procreate really went off on this one. Uh, yeah, so you can do gradient maps. This one's fun. Yeah. Anyway, this is just me fucking around just to see what it does. But this is the original. This is kind of how you do the method. It's pretty fun. Uh, honestly, it just gets you like a really simple color palette and whatever. And it only took a minute. And I, you don't even have to do that sketch that's under all of it too. Like that's a completely optional step. I usually actually just block it in. Uh, and yeah, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for watching, <laughs> I guess.